So with Angular, it's very easy to build UIs and uh, components which can be reused across your application. So if you build one component, you can use it across any application. So you can share, put it as a core, core component and use it in your other applications. So that's one of the beauty of the Angular, com Angular components. <coughs> so in this talk, I'm going to show you some uh, Angular component which is written in ES5 basically. And then we'll show you how can we modularize, modularize with ES6 as well as uh, bundling all the stuff. So, <clears throat> so this is my uh, project structure, and uh, this is where my code is. Uh, let me show you the running it. This is Angular one or two? One not five. Oh. Two. Yeah, maybe I present later. <clears throat> Let's find some Angular. Working nice. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so it's just a table uh, component. So it has a simple pagination, and uh, because it is a component, you can use it anywhere. So let's see code. Uh, so this is my table directive. So we call uh, components as directives in Angular JS. And uh, so this is uh, one file which has all the <coughs> component definition. So I have some constants. So Angular, it comes with a good separation of constants and uh, <coughs> basically dependency injection and all the MVVM pattern it comes with, right? So that makes your development very easy. So this is, uh, these are the set of constants I have. And then a service. This is a service which is giving me data back. And then the actual the directive definition. <clears throat> so this is a very common directive definition we see we see in the Angular JS. Like uh, we are asking it to restrict to element, and uh, we are replacing it with uh, the directive template we are using in the client side. And this is the template URL. So you can plug the HTML content which should be rendered at the runtime. So that is the HTML template template URL part, and this is the link where your actual logic is being executed. Right. How is it doing that with the, with the, uh, it's telling you the type of the uh, property. Sorry? How is it doing that with the, it's telling you the type of the property, Visual Studio, how does it know? Okay, so this Visual Studio code is uh, is fully uh, <coughs> integrated with TypeScript. So it's ah. good with TypeScript development, so that's the reason it's going. I haven't started that, I enabled that. So this is the uh, ES5 code. Uh, so when I join here in my company, I, all my code is like this. So when you have everything in one file, it's very hard to maintain it. So in, in terms of uh, finding out the issues, it's very difficult to look over the other file of code. So I thought of introducing a modular modular system so that I can piece, uh, take out the pieces which are unique into a separate file and then easy to maintain and then load it as well. So that's where I started with ES6. Uh, so other than ES6, we have uh, different modular systems already in place, like require, that is the AMD format. And then common JS we have, for the basically server-side modular loading. But I, I've chosen uh, ES6 because uh, ES6 is what upcoming modular system. And the Angular 2, they're completely using ES6 syntax as a wrapper of TypeScript. The TypeScript is like a combination of ES6 plus something. It comes with types, basically. So that's the reason I've chosen ES6. Uh, for modular system, and also started using some of the new features coming in ES6, like constants, arrow functions, and uh, parameters, default parameters, rest parameters, everything. So, so initial challenge was to set up the ES6 code. So the existing project, how can it make sure it runs with ES6 code? So we got to put some transpilations in place because as of today, browsers are not supporting ES6. 
So, but we want to get the benefit of ES6 syntax and all the stuff. So, because we don't want to change it all together at one time. So, let's start doing from today. So, by the time the browsers are ready, we have the code which can run browsers automatically. So, that's the reason I've chosen ES6. And uh, let's see uh, how the same component looks like in ES6 code. So this table, uh, this is the ES6 code I have written, and here I have separated all the uh, directive, service, constant, everything in a separate file. So with ES6, uh, <coughs> we can define everything as a class. I am using the classes syntax from ES6. So instead of a function, I can create own, my own class, and that class instance can I, I can pass it to the modeler system to create a directive. So that's I am doing here at the end. I'm creating a static class, static function. It's, it's part of class uh, ES6 syntax as well, and passing that instance back to the main file that is a module. So this is where all the pieces are coming together and combining as a component. So these are our, these are our modules exposed from different files. I see this is the config helper class, and this is the pagination class. So by following this classes syntax, so it's very easy to convert to Angular 2 once once they are ready, production ready. So that's the reason. Uh, so the best practices if we follow as of today, it's easy to migrate to Angular 2. So that's one of the reason I'm choosing with the classes syntax here. Right. So let's see. Let's see what uh, ES6 classes. And if you see most of the places, we can use. Uh, this is the arrow function I am using, and then similar way we can have, this is weak map, weak map. this is a new type coming, supported by ES6. So that, that, that will basically reduce a lot of your code with uh, smart syntax coming in ES6. All right? Cool. Yeah. Why, why don't you do that? Uh, the setting, so using the weak map there, uh -huh. you, why, why attach the, Config helper yeah. in, uh, to the weak map as opposed to the instance. Yeah. So the reason is that link function. So we want to use uh, services injected to the the table class uh -huh. should be accessible inside the link, link function. Oh, so but so the like link function. Is, yeah. Okay. That's gotcha. the reason. Nice. So otherwise you will not have control on any of these objects. Okay. That's so good. that's sure. the reason. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> what else is here? Yeah. So this is the ES6 code, and how do we run this code in the browser as of today? So for that, uh, let's see the index.html. So in the index.html, uh, I'm using the browser.js. So browser.js is a library from <coughs> Bubble. Bubble is a third-party library or a task we have to transpile the ES6 code back to ES5. Right? So <coughs> in, when it comes to transpiling, we can do it in the browser as well as at the build time. When I say browser, so in the local developments, we don't want a grunt task to run for a long time and transfer it back to ES5. So we wanted to let it happen in the browser very quickly. So that's the reason uh, I have chosen bubble browser.js for the browser transpilation. And uh, and I'm using system.js. Uh, system.js is another library. I think I'm throwing a lot of names here. So system.js is a module loader, a universal module loader, they are saying. So the modules written in required JS syntax or common JS or ES6 syntax. So any of these modules can be loaded through system JS. So system JS is like a wrapper on top of all these module loaders. Right? So I'm using system JS. And if you are aware, I, Angular 2 is also coming with system JS as a module loader. Right? So it's like we are trying to be as close as Angular 2. That's the that's reason. And then here, I'm initially triggering the my main.js file where it starts the bootstrapping process, Angular bootstrapping. From there, it will trace through all the libraries or files we needed, and it pull all the loads. It loads into the browser. So if you see main.js, uh, right? so this is where uh, we are bootstrapping application, angular.bootstrap of basically giving the element document body, and then giving the main module name. So that is my demo table. And in my demo table, right? so I have dependency to my actual table component. 
so I don't need to bother to load about the table. This module is from the table module. And I am given that as a dependency for my demo module. So demo module will load the action module as well as. The similar way, we'll have multiple trees, and all the trees will get connected to the one main file. So that will start the bootstrapping process. So that's, uh, that's about the system.js module loading. All right. And uh, let's, let's run it in the browser and see how it works. If you are not aware of Grunt, Grunt is a task runner. It's very famous in client-side development. So there are thousands of libraries written and published on the web. So you can take any of the tasks and run as a part of your Grunt tasks. So every task can do some specific work for like uh, converting HTML to JS file, JS content, or concatenating, copying files. So for every purpose, we have a Grunt task. So that's where we are using Grunt here. So I'm running it on a different port. So this is the same same content. There is no change. But let's see how the files are being loaded. So this is my client library. If you see, every file has another transpiled file here. So that's where the transpilation is happening. See the bubble.js, sorry, browser.js, which is from the bubble, right? So that is transpiling and putting another transpiled file. This is the ES6 syntax. When it comes to ES5, it comes with a lot of code. You don't need to be worried about that. It works. Right? And uh, <clears throat> so this is the same with all the, all the files. We have whatever is written in ES6, it gets another transpiled file. And when it comes to debugging, uh, you can put breakpoints on your ES6 code directly and make sure all your debugging is working fine. So it just gets and reads, and you can debug it there. Right? So this is about uh, ES6 translation. And uh, so right, so we have the component ready. And we got to deploy this component. So because uh, this is written on the client, all the JavaScript we have to, and also all the code is written, split into multiple files, and we got to bundle all of them. So we don't want to deploy all these 100 files into server. We got to bundle it together and make a single file. So for that, I'm using uh, system bundler. So that is also from system.js uh, family. All right. Front file. So this is the transpile task I have written. And here we have a bubble. As I mentioned before, uh, bubble comes with the build time task as well. So this is the task I have configured here. And uh, I'm asking bubble to watch all these files, or take all these files and transpile them back to a dist folder. Right. So I'm running only the transpile task. It should generate a dist folder. Test remove just now. Actually runs a little quick, but it's taking time. So because it is at build time, it's okay to take me a few seconds instead of uh, happening it in the browser. So I think they are optimizing it, uh, the bundling process as well, because uh, there are a lot of complaints from the bubble side and the time taken by transpiration. Be rule or anything, just one, oh, no. just, just wondering how many dependencies do you have just for a table? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a project, right? So, one component I have as of now. So, I, I'm trying to show the overall uh, workflow of your project development. So, I started with the table. So, you can later you can add thousands of features to it. So, basically, the project is set up with this structure we have as of discussion, right? 
So we have the transpiration, we have bundling process, we have the com compression, and then zipping, everything is done. So the, once you pull this code from the GitHub, you can keep on adding your code or new features and then deploy it. So it's like a production ready. So that project setup is there. So I wanted to just uh, give you the ins of the whole flow, right? Yeah, the client side development will be like that. You have to pull a lot of libraries, dependencies. Like, so for example, the project I'm working on, uh, uh -huh. it's got a total of 2,159 packages. All right. Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, like, that's a kind of, these days, that's normal. Have a thousand packages, that's a few. You know, I, 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 this is, I could probably, I could probably get more if I wanted. Okay. Why did you tell me how the compatibility? Compatibility. MPM does us. <laughs> Right. Uh, this is, I think, transpired, translation over. <clears throat> so the ES5 that is being generated from Babel that looks a little different from what you write every day because it comes with uh, object-oriented notations and uh, there is a lot of logic added extra or it's kind of wrapping on, on top of your ES5. So that's the difference. But you'll get used to it once you start writing the code and debugging it in ES5. <clears throat> So I'm basically saying grunt release, so I, it's like a preparing for the deployment. So while it's happening, uh, any questions on ES6 and Angular 2? Your amount of code that's in like, ES6 is probably quite minimal compared to the rest of Angular. Does it make any difference on uh, what's delivered to the client? So performance-wise? Performance-wise, there is no difference because uh, it's all the same code, but only the benefit you get in the development time. You're talking about the load, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always worried of sending more stuff to the client. And as soon as you start transpiling, it's got the impact of some description. Um, but then like, the amount that you're actually writing yourself compared to library is probably quite small. And Jesus. Yeah, so it probably doesn't actually make any difference. Well, then, then, uh, there's, there's actually a problem at the moment. There's no decent, um, like, Uglify doesn't work with ES6. Like, Uglify is awesome, um, yeah. but yeah, it won't work. Won't, uh, so if you've got uh, like an arrow function in there or something, you know, Uglify is just like, nah, can't do it. Um, so if, you, if you're trying to target like modern browsers or modern mm -hmm. node, yeah, you can't have the which sucks at the moment. It, there's a branch for it though. Um, so once you transfer it back to ES5, it, it should work. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It should yeah, be a stack file. Yeah, it's a Right, looks like it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm trying to do in run trial is right, basically bundling all this stuff. So to show the bundler file, so this is where I'm asking a system JS bundler to bundle my whole uh, code. So this is my main.js. I'm asking to bundle this. <coughs> and bundle the file will be moved to this location. So it's one file is gonna get created. And then we'll just zip it and deploy. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you.